Welcome to Premiere Pro Tips Part D. Are you stuck inside like me? Don't worry, I got five new Premiere Pro Tips to help you out, so let's go. Tip number one, using the keyboard to edit faster. Here's a way to speed up your editing time. You can make cuts on your timeline without switching to the blade tool. By default, the keyboard shortcut to do this on the timeline is Command-Shift-K, but I suggest you make a custom keyboard shortcut to make this easier to do. Then, after you've made your initial cuts, you can ripple trim delete to the left or the right of the playhead by pressing the Q or W keys. You'll save a lot of time without having to switch tools like to the razor tool, for example, and in editing, time is money. Tip number two, auto reframe. One of Premiere 2020's new features is its ability to auto reframe your video. This feature uses some trick AI to figure out where the action is happening in the frame. It can then reframe the video in vertical or square ratios. I have a small sequence here that was shot 16.9. I want to use auto reframe to recompose the video into another size. Inside the project bin, I'm going to right click on my current timeline and click auto reframe sequence. A window will pop up asking you what size you'd like to reframe this sequence. In this example, I'm simply going to make a vertical 4x5 ratio video. The option below called motion preset is used to change how this plugin will detect what the subject is doing in the frame. It's a fast moving subject, so select fast motion. If it's moving slow, try slower motion. I've had much success with the default setting for most general actions on screen. After selecting your ratio, there is an option for clip nesting. If you are reframing a timeline that has transitions in it, select don't nest clips. Use the nest clips option if you already have custom motion settings in your timeline. This creates a nested sequence preserving your settings but removes any transitions. I'm going to use the first option, but don't nest clips for this example. Then press create, and the magic happens in the background. This will take a moment to process depending on how fast your computer is. Once this is finished, we have a new created timeline in a 4-5 ratio. As I click on the clip here in the timeline, in the clip properties you can see all the position keyframes made automatically by AutoFrame. Now you, the editor, need not do anything. All the heavy lifting has been done for you. This is a time saver. Tip number three, always visible track names. A cool organizational feature is we can label each track individually and always have that track name visible. So here's how. From your timeline, right click on the open space of any track. Scroll down to customize. When the button editor comes up, click and drag the track name icon. Now this icon can be V1 for video or A1 for audio, depending on which track you clicked to enable this feature. Move the track name icon to the end of the track space. Now name your tracks accordingly. Tip number four, concise clip selection. Maybe you need to render a certain section or clip on a timeline, or you are making specific in and out points for an export. Generally on the keyboard, you press I for key in and O for key out. But when you do this, you end up with one additional frame at the end that you don't want. This happens because in order for the last frame to play back, it must place the actual out point one frame ahead. Pressing the forward slash key on the keyboard will make an in and out point for any selection you make on the timeline. Need a specific clip? Select it and press forward slash and now you have an in and out points for that clip. Need to select a range of clips? Select the range and press forward slash, it's that easy. Tip number five, extending your music tracks. I'm sure all of us have had this very same issue where you drop down your music track for your edit only to find out that the music track is too short. But what if I told you there's a way to actually extend the music to the desired length you need all by making just a few clicks? In Premiere, click the music track in question. Click Edit, Edit, and Audition. Adobe Audition will load up if it has not been opened already. Once you are in Audition, click New, Multi-Track Session, and give it a name and press OK. Drop that music track into the Audition session, and on the left, click Properties, Remix, Enable, Remix. Once Audition has processed the music track, you can now adjust the music track to your desired length by adjusting the target duration. Once you've listened to the track, go to File, Export to Premiere. Name your track and click Export. Once the export is finished, Premiere should automatically come up. It will ask you where you want to place your new extended music track. Specify the track you want it to be placed down on the timeline from the drop down menu and then press OK. And now your extended music track is added to your edit. 
Well, I hope these premiere tips were helpful. Do you have any premiere tips to share with us? Let me know in the comments below. This is Jake with BH. Just keep rolling.